Hi everyone, welcome back to Cardinal Science for another IGCC Chemistry 2017 video. Okay, so today's topic is metallic bonding. So we'll be looking at specification points 1.52, 1.53 and 1.54. And you'll notice the C there on the specification just denotes that these are part of the triple science part of the course. If you did double science, you wouldn't need to do this content at all. So we'll be looking at how to represent metallic lattices uh, using a 2D diagram. We'll be understanding how metallic bonding relates to electrostatic attractions and we'll be explaining the typical properties of metals including their electrical conductivity and their malleability okay so first things first there are three types of bonding structure that you'll do in this gcse course metallic bonding ionic bonding and covalent bonding and metallic bonding is unique among the three of them so metal atoms actually bond with themselves what they do is a metal atom will donate all of its outer shell electrons forming a positive metal ion and these electrons will become delocalized and can move freely throughout the structure of the metal so for example in sodium metal the sodium that's in group one donates its outer shell electron into what we call the sea of delocalized electrons so each of these ions has donated a single electron into this what we call a sea of delocalized electrons now what I mean by delocalized is that they're not stuck around the atom that donated them. They are free to move throughout the entire structure. Okay, so now we know what the structure is like. How does it relate to electrostatic attractions? Well, if you didn't know already, electrostatic attractions are attractions between oppositely charged things. These can be electrons, protons, or oppositely charged ions. So a proton could be attracted to an electron and vice versa or you might have um, a positive ion being attracted to an electron and vice versa, or any of the combinations. But what we're talking about is the oppositely charged things attracting each other. Okay, now these attractions are very strong and it takes a lot of energy to overcome them. And this affects the properties of metals. Okay, so now that we know what electrostatic attractions are, how do we apply this to metals? Well, metals consist of a lattice of positive metal ions surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons. So we have positive metal ions and negative electrons attracting each other. Now, these will determine the properties of the metal in terms of its melting and boiling point. But the strength of this attraction is determined by the charge of the metal ion, which could be one plus, two plus, and so on, and by how many electrons there are. So for example, we started off with sodium atoms and they donated one electron each to form a sodium one plus ion and one electron per atom into the sea of delocalized electrons. If you had magnesium metal, you would have each one giving up two electrons to form magnesium two plus ions and each would give up two electrons into the sea of delocalized electrons. So you've doubled the number of electrons now in the sea and you've doubled the charge of the ion, which means the attractions will be even stronger. And thirdly, if you had aluminium, for example, it would form an aluminium three plus ion, each one giving up three electrons to the sea of delocalized electrons. And so the melting and boiling points of this should be going up as we move down here. So sodium the lowest, then magnesium, then aluminium. But why do these electrostatic attractions lead to high melting and boiling points in metals? Well, they're very strong attractions. Okay, so you've got a lattice of positive ions attracted very strongly to a sea of delocalized electrons moving over them. Now, because it's a strong attraction, it therefore requires a lot of energy to overcome them. And this is energy in the form of heat that you'd have to apply to melt it. Okay, so like you can see in this diagram, to pull those sodium ions apart ever so slightly, and that's what melting is, okay, it requires a lot of energy. So to put a lot of energy in to make this happen. Okay, but how does the property of malleability come about in metals? So malleability is the ability for something to be bent and shaped as opposed to breaking and shattering when force is applied to it. Now, if you remember, the structure of a metal is of layers of metal ions surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons. And I'll just show you a few of these electrons in here, just so you don't forget that they are, they are there. Now, if I were to apply a force and hit this metal from here, okay, Instead of breaking or shattering, what's going to happen instead is those layers will move past each other and it will be reshaped. And what happens is that if only gaps are made in the structure, the electrons 
that are free to move will fill in those gaps. Okay, so the electrons are still there. So they fill in the gaps, therefore retaining the structure and the attraction between the two. And so the metal doesn't lose its properties. It just changes shape. So next there's electrical conductivity. Now for something to conduct electricity, we require the movement of charge. This can either be as regard to ions, so positive or negative ions, or electrons. Only where you have ions or electrons that are free to move will electricity be able to flow. Now thankfully in metals we have a delocalized sea of electrons and they're all free to move and therefore they can carry charge. So if I apply a current through these electrodes here and here, what will happen is the electrons in the sea of delocalized electrons will be able to move. Okay, So they can move through the structure and carry charge and therefore metals conduct electricity. So there's a range of ways this can be examined, from very simple one mark questions where you might get multiple choice, or you might be asked to identify what kind of bonding there is in a given metal. For example, they might say, what kind of bonding is there in sodium, in which case you would say metallic. We then move on to the three or four mark questions where you could be asked to describe the bonding in a given metal, whereby you would say you have layers of positive metal ions surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons with strong electrostatic attractions between them. You might be asked to explain certain properties, why they have high melting and boiling points, why they're malleable and why they conduct electricity. Or you might get a five or six marks question where you might be asked to combine some of those aspects of the three or four marks. For example, describe the bonding in sodium and explain why it's malleable and conducts electricity. Now, be clear here, if the question mentions a specific metal, you must be specific in your answer. Therefore, if it says describe the bonding in sodium, you need to say that each atom donates one electron to the sea of delocalized electrons, forming sodium one plus ions. OK, so with that in mind, let's just have a quick look at an example. So a possible exam question could be this. Describe the bonding in magnesium and explain why it is malleable and conduct electricity for six marks. Now, there are three aspects to this question. You've got to describe the bonding. You've got to explain why it's malleable and why it conducts electricity. Treat those separately. Make sure you address all three. So in the beginning, you're going to say that the bonding in magnesium consists of a lattice of positive magnesium two plus ions. OK, so we need to be specific, surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons. You might even say that the ions donate two electrons per atom. Then explain why it's malleable. It's malleable because it has layers of ions that can slide past each other and the electrons fill any spaces. There are sometimes even marks for explaining what malleable means in this case. And why it conducts electricity? Because it has a sea of delocalized electrons that are free to move and can therefore carry charge. Now you'll note that there's more than six points here, but you need any six of these to get the marks. However, you can normally only get two from each part. So you need to score two in the bonding section, two in the malleability section, and two in the conduction of electricity section. Thank you for watching. You've been watching Cardinal Science doing IGCC Chemistry 2017 specification. If it's been helpful, please leave a comment below and a like, and perhaps even subscribe to keep up with further videos as I move through the specification. Take care.